Our story in Bloodborne begins as a traveller. Having come from afar without memory, we arrive in Yarnum knowing only that we need to seek pale blood, although not having been told what this means. We start off in Yosefka's clinic where a minister at first implies that he knows something about pale blood. Oh, yeah. Pale blood. But then quickly changes the subject to the ministration of Yarnum blood. Well, you've come to the right place. Yarnum is the home of blood ministration. You need only unravel its mystery. Waking up soon after with a faint memory of the transfusion, we are no closer to knowing the meaning of pale blood, and in the end we never do learn our original motivation for leaving our homeland. However, our meeting with the blood minister was not always planned to be relegated to just a short introductory cutscene. This encounter was once planned to take place in-game, and through this we would have learned a little more as to what has brought us to Yarnum in the first place. Welcome, weary traveller, to the great city of Yarnum. The troubles you must have seen. Your homeland plagued by a sickness that spares few. You suffer. Your loved ones suffer. It's like a curse. But there is hope for you yet. The blood used in ministration, the trade of Yarnum, is a special thing indeed. The only thing that can cure your sickness. Well then, let's draw you up a contract. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. In a few moments you'll be good as new. Like it was all just a bad dream. <laughs> and so here, before we receive the transfusion, we're told specifically that we've come to Yarnum in search of the city's famous healing blood, as our homeland, as well as ourselves, are plagued by sickness. There is also no mention of anything called pale blood in this earlier concept, and despite a few lines of dialogue being the same as what ended up in the final game, the entirety of this carries a completely different tone of voice. Because all of this was cut from the game before the Japanese dub was recorded, switching languages still results in an English voiceover being used. Welcome, weary traveller to the great city of Yarna. The troubles you must have seen. Your homeland plagued by a sickness that spares few. You suffer, your loved ones suffer. It's like a curse. But there is hope for you yet. The blood used in ministration, the trade of Yarnum, is a special thing indeed. The only thing that can cure your sickness. Well then, let's draw you up a contract. Good. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. In a few moments you'll be good as new. Like it was all just a bad dream. <laughs> Further to this, another wholly unique version of this encounter exists, one with a little less emphasis on the player character's backstory, but still more than what we get in the final game. Welcome, traveller. You've suffered a long journey to this great city of Yarnum. And you should be glad you did. The blood used in ministration, the trade of Yarnum, is a special thing indeed. The only thing that can cure your sickness. Well then, let's draw you up a contract. Uh, all signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. No, oh, don't you worry. In a few moments you'll be good as new. Like it was all just a bad dream. <laughs> In this later version, we no longer have any reference to the protagonist's homeland, but there is still mention of the character carrying some sickness, so a reason for coming to Yarnum is given. Welcome, traveller. You've suffered a long journey to this great city of Yarnum. And you should be glad you did. 
The blood used in ministration, the trade of Yarnum, is a special thing indeed. The only thing that can cure your sickness. Well then, let's draw you up a contract. Uh, all signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. In a few moments, you'll be good as new. Like it was all just a bad dream. <laughs> oh, yes. If we decline the contract and then return to speak to the Blood Minister again, we get a much shorter version of this speech. Aren't you lucky? This blood's rather special. It may well cure you of your peculiar condition. Ah. Let's draw you up a contract. Good. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. You'll be as good as new. Like it was all just a bad dream. Aren't you lucky? This blood's rather special. It may well cure you of your peculiar condition. Ah. Let's draw you up a contract. Good. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. You'll be as good as new. Like it was all just a bad dream. <laughs> So of course the implication here is that after the transfusion, as is the case in the final game, we wake up finding ourselves in the nightmare of blood and beasts. However, the original plan was for us to have one more encounter with the blood minister after this had happened, where he would comment on the sequence of events. Yes. Yes. See? Woken up with something of a nightmare, have you? A foul, murky story, quite beyond my own reckoning. Oh, that'd be something to tell the grandkids. Hey. Oh, but I've nothing more to tell. I only show the way. And the way has been shown. Now, it's in your hands until the dank, sweet mud takes us all upon the awakening of Ebritus. <laughs> so rather than there being any mention of pale blood in this earlier draft of the scenario, we have a direct reference to Ebritus instead, who likely played a far different role in the game's story at this point in development. Yes. Yes. See? Woken up with something of a nightmare, have you? A foul, murky story, quite beyond my own reckoning. Oh, that'd be something to tell the grandkids. Hey. Oh, but I've nothing more to tell. I only show the way. And the way has been shown. Now, it's in your hands until the dank, sweet mud takes us all upon the awakening of Ebritus. <laughs> From here we're expected to continue forth and the minister has nothing more to say, unless we choose to attack him. <sighs> My death matters not. It's your nightmare, after all. This small bit of dialogue does elaborate a little on the nature of dreams and nightmares in a way that we don't explicitly hear in the final game. My death matters not. It's your nightmare, after all. 
And so in the end all of this was cut from the game, although of course a small amount was reframed as the opening cinematic. Its removal makes sense to a degree, with some late story changes contradicting what's been said. However, it is still nice to hear a little more voice work from a character who only got to speak for such a short time in the finished product. I hope you found it a little interesting to see these moments brought back to life within the game. It always takes a lot of effort to pull all these pieces together in a working fashion, so if you did enjoy this, feel free to let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a friendly comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already, as I'm always working on showing you something new from a few different games. You can find more ways to follow and support my work in the description, and either way, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.